keynote topic on all the industries but particular to our field it plays a major role for for the success i welcome our chief guest mr gt kotiswaran sir for leading our students to the success path he is here to speak on project management in construction and industry approach he is a civil engineer graduated from tamil nadu college of engineering 2006 and done his post graduate in college of engineering anna university with a specialization in construction engineering and management he has 12 years of experience in handling power plant industrial educational and residential projects work it with multiple client pmc and contractor firms he also had a 3 years of experience in lecturing graduate and post graduate students in a couple of uh, engineering college his work uh, uh his work spread across different spheres of construction such as contract negotiation and uh, finalization uh, planning site execution quality management building and uh, quantity surveying etc he started his career with the tata consulting engineer pvt limited and then worked with the companies like uh, cico and engineers uh, pvt limited campus student communities pvt limited and uh, currently he is with the uh, cbre south asia pvt limited for the past 5 years also he have the following to his credits uh, received performance excellent award for from cbre indian circle of excellence for 2022 and published research papers in the three international journals and one international conference and presented an uh, innovation pertaining to project hill sinking method for cbd in innovation 2011 by tce and qualified as qms internal auditor based on iso 9001 2008 and ranked third in the masters education at anna university and also honored with the first class with the distinction in both post graduation and graduation studies he is now a senior manager in cbre cbre is the global leader in real estate investment and services it has its origin in america with its branches across the world so we can't have any other person to explain about management than him who has worked in different spheres of construction industry we are glad to hear your speech sir and i would like to welcome our hachuri ma'am dr r kumuda ma'am and our faculty coordinator mr vijayagnesh sir assistant professor also i would like to welcome the faculty members and students who are excited to acquire the knowledge from our beloved chief guest once again i welcome you all to this webinar thank you sir yeah yeah thank you thank thanks for your uh, nice present nice introduction about me and uh, very good morning to one and all present here uh, hope my hope i am audible to everyone the voice is clear yes sir yes sir clear okay so okay uh, first of all i uh, thank uh, each and uh, every one of you who took effort uh, in organizing this uh, webinar and also uh, i believe that uh, i take this as an opportunity to uh, meet my old colleagues and also my student friends and uh, uh, i i am sure that uh, the, the students who are attending this webinar here will be my future colleagues so i i welcome uh, each and on uh, each and every one for this webinar uh, so uh, i will i will uh, just start my presentation Do you all able to see my screen? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. Uh, to start with my before starting with my presentation, I uh, just wanted to start with a quote. Uh, 
uh, like uh, the famous quote uh, said by Mr. Abraham Lincoln. So give me six hours to chop down a tree and I will spend the first four sharpening the axe. So uh, I wanted to relate uh, this quote to the project management. Like uh, in project management, the main aspect of uh, project management, uh, I believe, is a planning part. Okay. Normally, in, in our industry, the two uh, in India, we take uh, much effort in planning and we take more, we put more effort in the execution part. That is uh, the site execution, actual construction. But in other countries, they, they take more time in planning. Like if it is a one year project, they, they took much time. They take much time around eight, eight to seven months in planning and they execute the project in four to five months. But in our case, we do we do planning for one month, less than one month. And we, we deliver, we, we are trying to deliver the project in 11 months. But the success rate of the project in India is very less. Success rate in the sense, ultimately the project will be completed, but the timeline, the timeline in, the, in getting the project completed, if you take uh, on an average 70 to 75 percentage of project, it's getting delayed in India. And also if you take the cost, cost part also, we are, uh, there is cost overruns from the budget by uh, almost in 60 to 65 percentage of the projects. So uh, it, it is uh, uh, really an uh, uh, important thing uh, to have to be to put the planning uh, in the first uh, priority to get uh, the uh, execution part well at uh, in the construction site. So this is this is the first uh, thing uh, just I wanted to share with you and. Uh, Directly, we'll get into the presentation. So the, uh, this is uh, my my topic today is uh, like uh, project management in construction uh, and industrial approach. So uh, every, everyone knows like uh, project uh, it it has uh, mainly uh, uh, it is revolving around the major three constraints. So one is time, then cost, and then scope. So these these three are related to each other. If if one gets disturbed or if it one gets impacted, automatically the other two will, will get impacted. So it's like a juggling three balls with a hand. So most of the projects it which gets delayed or uh, which gets cost overruns, it's mainly due to. Uh, the change of the scope during the course of a project. So that is being observed in uh, many of the projects in India, because uh, no, normally while uh, issuing drawings or uh, during the planning planning phase, the details uh, available for execution will be very less. And during the course of time, during the course of construction, whatever the changes that is coming in, will be huge so the automatically the scope of the project gets changed so if the scope of the project gets changed automatically it affects the cost and time of a project so apart from that the other key factors if these three are these three are related to quality so quality is mainly we we define quality mainly as meeting the client's expectations so client will have certain expectations that has to be met in terms of quality we have defined process uh, to meet out uh, the budget uh, timeline and uh, quality and we do analyze the risk part which is a critical factor in, uh, in any construction uh, before proceeding with the construction it is it is mandatory for any any firm to analyze the risk which are involved in the project. There is uncertainty that may evolve during the uh, course of construction. So that has to be analyzed before starting the project and the mitigation measures has to be uh, taken before starting the construction. And 
no, normally we in uh, engineer civil civil construction terms uh, we we used to say three three m's are important for uh, any project one is men uh, manpower machinery and material so the three resources so we also face a shortage uh, in uh, manpower and also in getting a skilled manpower we are very much lagging nowadays we get manpower but uh, getting a skilled is a very difficult task in the current uh, uh, construction industry so uh, people are uh, thinking of uh, moving more into the automation uh, due to due to this constraint and all together uh, in a project even if there is a time impact even if there is a cost overrun even if there is a marginal uh, difference in quality whatever may be ultimately uh, we cannot compromise anything on safety so safety is uh, very much uh, uh, focused and it has to be put up in the first place in any construction project because this impact uh, the life life of a person so i'll quickly uh, run through the outline of this presentation so these are the topics that i'm going to discuss today with you uh, definition of project need for project management key stakeholders various stages and aspects of a project and uh, challenges what are the challenges in project management and what are the future and advancements in construction and uh, i have added one more slide like uh, once once you uh, complete your education that is civil engineering and come out of uh, come, come out to the construction field so what are the different roles that you can take up uh, so this this is uh, this is also uh, something related to uh, project but it is not directly related to the project management just i just wanted to uh, give you an uh, uh, insight so to start with uh, uh, first i'll uh, tell you what is what is a project see project is a sequence of activities uh, which is done over a period of time and intended to achieve a particular purpose so uh, anything can be called as a project not only the construction project uh, what, whatever the project you do uh, in your college so that can be called as a project uh, so it 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 main main aspect of a project is it is a time bound one we have a definite start and an end so it, it is a definite uh, time frame one and uh, it should be a result oriented we, we will have a goal for a project uh, and that uh, that result that should be achieved and then we will have a set of requirements like quality safety uh, during the construction during the project uh, we have certain uh, requirements that has to be fulfilled and uh, uniqueness uh, the uniqueness of a project is that it is unique in nature so every project is unique uh, you cannot compare each project the project uh, which happens even if you consider a metro project that is happening in chennai you cannot relate uh, same project that is happening somewhere else because here the soil condition will be clay, somewhere else the soil condition will be rock. So the self-bearing capacity of the soil will be different. So, so something like that. So even if, you, if, if even if the project looks something similar, but it won't be similar in nature, the problems, whatever you face during the project and uh, the problem, the outcomes, uh, ultimately the outcome will be same. But uh, the during the course of project, what are the challenges that you face that is uh, different? So you have to deal different with in different projects and all projects are pre-planned. So why you need uh, project management? So directly see uh, when, a, when a owner or a client, if he has money and if he is intended to build a building or an uh, industry or something like that he can directly acquire an uh, contractor and uh, give him the work and get the job done but why why the project management is in place why that is uh, required in between 
the contractor and uh, the owner and also the other stakeholders so first point is like continuous oversight till completion so we are we are normally operating as a owner's representative so who are the owner or a client even if you take uh, infosys or tcs or uh, whatever the name you uh, call it as uh, even the uh, uh, in the industry from industry also we have uh, amazon flipkart so we, we have multiple uh, clients so uh, the, these clients appoint us as a uh, project management consultants so mainly like uh, we on behalf of those client we operate the project we get the job done and we deliver it on time and on budget even if there is any time and cost overrun we'll be able to track and inform to client why it has been increased and also what is the mitigation plan what is the alternate uh, plan that can be done to bring down the cost and time so uh, in a project if we have like if it is a single contractor you can give a direct job to the contractor and get the job done but uh, in a project it is not like that we have multiple contractors uh, like an electrical firefighting uh, then uh, public addressing fire alarm uh, interior civil so we have n number of contractors so uh, everybody will be working on their goal and their motto so we we are the person who directed them towards a common objective and also we we ensure that project resources are deployed on correct time and they are used effectively and as i said we are the coordinator main coordinator between all the stakeholders and also we implement a process to track the resources estimate track control resource cost and time and also we we communicate what are the risk what are the changes what are the progress everything to client on regular basis also we 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 understand the project risk due to our uh, experience in the industry uh, from the lessons learned from our previous projects we understand what is what are the projects issues and risks that may come upon in this project and we we try to avoid that and we implement the same in the better way to, for the better completion of the project and also we document transfer and apply learn from our previous projects you know, normally uh, project if you take project you can split up split it up into three with respect to construction i'm talking about one is pre-construction other thing is construction then post-construction to be specific in in pre-construction we do this init initiation planning okay so initiation what are the things that has to be done before starting a project and planning what are the plans that has to be prepared before commencing a project and once project starts kick off then we execute in the execution stage what are the things that you do to track cost time and resources and how how we have a baseline of uh, budget and how you are tracking to how you are monitoring with respect to the baseline and how you are closing your closing of the project so this is the sequence so we will split up into three pre-construction construction and post-construction and same way we are initiating planning that will come in the pre-construction part of execution will come in the pre-construction as well as uh, uh, construction and the monitoring and control will be in the construction part and the closing stage will be in the post-construction part so this is uh, the five aspects of uh, construction and uh, what what are the other management uh, 
that has to be done in a project management. As I said earlier, time, cost, quality, then HR, communication, procurement, risk, stakeholders, integration, scope. So these are all the different uh, uh, management that has to be de dealt in a project management. So this is uh, just a uh, flowchart to understand uh, who are the max, uh, who are the what major stakeholders in a project. So sponsor initiator is the client. So whenever a client has a, the client has an intent to develop an uh, industry or uh, or a residential building or an apartment or commercial complex, whatever it is. So he he appoints a project management consultant. Normally uh, it works like this. Uh, client will appoint project management consultant and project man management consultant will in turn appoint the architect, uh, the licensing consultants and the other consultants. But in uh, some, some projects, client may appoint architects, then architect will appoint project management consultants. So it, it depends on the client needs, uh, what they need. So normally it goes like this. First, uh, the project management consultant will be appointed. Then architect uh, consultant, mostly architect and consultant will be of the, will uh, their scope of work will be belong to the same uh, firm. And then uh, licensing consultant, uh, they normally do this, uh, all these uh, statutory approvals and uh, uh, on behalf of client, mostly dealing with all these government bodies and uh, other consultants like uh, uh, for normally they, we, they used to, if, if client uh, wanted to have a separate consultant for uh, MEP, that is a mechanical electrical plumbing services or uh, uh, other the lighting, lighting. Some, some client uh, they offer to have they have separate uh, consultant for lighting and acoustics and uh, this uh, uh, we have green building concept. So IGBC or lead consultants. So there are many consultants like that. It it ultimately depends on the client. They what 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 the what are the services they want. If they are if they are very much happy with uh, the project management consultant, but normally in a project, normally project management consultant will be there, architect uh, design consultant will be there, then licensing consultant will be there, and uh, if it if it is a green building and the IGBC consultant will be there. All this, all the design part, all the structural uh, uh, designing, everything will be taken care by uh, the structural consultant itself, and then. Uh, we 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 are the one who who uh, appoint the contractors on board so we have a defined process uh, to pre qualify the contractors and uh, award them the job and then the in turn the contractors will have their uh, subcontractors okay uh, Dad, can I continue or uh, do you have any other questions? Uh, can I stop uh, or can I continue? Till now, uh, do you have any other questions? No, sir. No. They don't have any. Okay. If, if you have any questions, you can stop me in between. Uh, I'm, I'm okay to answer your queries. Okay. So uh, as I said earlier, see initiating first, how, how you initiate a project. So first comes the pre-construction. In pre-construction first, there will be a client, client or owner, who is the initiator and sponsor. Uh, who, who in general terms, he, he has the cash to uh, for the project. And uh, once, once project is uh, initiated, uh, client normally they do uh, economic and uh, technical feasibility study of a project. Uh, depending upon their locations uh, and uh, what 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 is the revenue that they earn from that project building up that that project what is the payback period if they are investing this much amount what is the payback period that uh, the amount that 100% uh, amount will be recovered to them so these are all the studies they will do uh, and also uh, what are where are the raw materials uh, whether the it is it is close to the project or uh, uh, who is the transportation so all, all these studies will be done by the client and uh, after that they appoint a project management consultant, architect, structural consultant, other consultant and uh, they also define the roles and responsibilities of uh, various stakeholders. Uh, 
if if they appoint only project management consultant then we take care of that we define the roles and responsibilities of other consultants uh, we award them the work uh, and then it starts with the geotechnical investigation that is soil investigation uh, so we appoint a, a separate vendor to start the soil investigation and then once uh, the architect once the architect or the structural consultant comes in he he sits with the client and he gets the urs that is user requirement specification so that is like uh, the the uh, consultant gets the input from the client that what are the features that he needs in a project like uh, what are, what are the different uh, uh, buildings he need what are what are the different uh, uh, what type of uh, elevation he need what are what are the features that he need in a building what is the temperature of the, this room he need what is the uh, what is the lighting requirement he need so all these all these requirements what are the equipments that he is going to uh, bring in for the industry and what are the power requirements for those in the, for the, for those machineries and uh, what are the it requirements for those machineries so something like that so what are the workstations required so what is the ca canteen space and uh, so something like that what are the occupancy how how much uh, what are the occupant what is the quantum of uh, people that is going to come in uh, so this kind of requirements so everything will be taken by the consultant from the client so they prepare a document called user requirement specification so this is the uh, first thing and also based on that they prepare a conceptual plan so general layout so general layout will have like once once a uh, it will be like a, a what a, a preliminary layout so it will be out that wherever the what are the features of the building so where it is located uh, what is the road road with you want where are the, where, where you want the drainages uh, where you want your security building where you want your uh, uh, what type of roof you want uh, uh, what type of elevation you want so everything will be there in the conceptual plan so parallelly uh, the project management consultant also sits with uh, the stakeholders and prepare the uh, risk analyze the risk so if you want to just uh, have a view on the uh, risk register i can show you so this is this is a risk register uh, so if, if you see uh, I'll, I'll tell you some some few examples of risk in, in a project uh, the substructure uh, strata you do not know uh, once you get the geotechnical investigation report then only you will come to know what is there in the below ground so that 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 uh, risk has to be uh, incorporated and then uh, initially when you are going to a project to clear all the bushes and trees so in in that case you you might face uh, some uh, some risk with uh, the reptiles so that uh, risk, that kind of risk has to be the, this and all uh, risk uh, which is beyond our imagination but still the risk uh, uh, we, even if it is a smaller risk or if it is a higher risk whatever the risk that has to be uh, captured. So we categorize the risk based on the uh, uh, severe impact, severity impact, and the probability of occurrence. So uh, there is there there are some some risk uh, which may be uh, highly impact your project, but its probability of occurrence will be very less. But there are there are some risk uh, which which a probability of occurrence is more but it will have less let less uh, impact in your project so based on that uh, we rate we rate the risk in a project and also we we have a mitigation plan what what is the what is the plan of action we have taken for that and this will be uh, updated every fortnightly or every week because uh, once once you are in the project uh, the uh, risk risk actually uh, uh, changes some risk will get closed and some risk will get uh, opened 
and then uh, we define uh, the timeline of a project measure milestones milestones is nothing but uh, uh, the uh, key key activities that is a uh, like if you, if you if you consider in a project uh, completion of roofing is a key milestone and then uh, completion of flooring is a milestone and uh, completion of utilities is a milestone so completion of all electrical equipment installation is a milestone so even if you will have some thousand activities or thousand five hundred activities in a project but uh, we we define what are the milestones so milestones will give you an overall idea of a project where you are standing instead of going into detail and analyze and analyze what are the activities completed what is not completed milestone in in general uh, it will give you an uh, idea of uh, where your project is and uh, once this is done then once a key plan is done then strategic approvals for a project has to be taken uh, so without that we cannot commence the construction so dish this is the department of industrial safety and health and then uh, this uh, health uh, department and uh, fire uh, noc uh, ddcp approval plan approval and uh, pollution control board clearance both for air and water so here you have to mention like uh, what are what are the they give you uh, what are the uh, based on the based on the equipments that you are going to bring in in the factory uh, so the we have we need to mention what what is the outlet uh, of a particular missionary uh, what is the air quality that we are going to maintain all these details we have to, we need to provide to to obtain this uh, pcb clearance and also with respect to water also uh, we need to understand uh, what what is the quantum of sewage that is going to uh, get uh, coming out from the factory and also effluent so how we are going to treat that uh, sewage and effluent and what is the technology that we use to treat that and uh, how we are going to re re reuse that water uh, so normally we use that water for flushing toilet flushing or uh, irrigation purpose so this, these are all the details we need we give to them and get the pollution control board clearance and bocw so BOCW is uh, building and other uh, construction workers registration. So this has to be obtained by the client to start the construction. So without that, uh, we cannot start the construction. So apart from that, if your project is very close to airport or uh, coastal lines, we need to take uh, uh, approvals from airport authority and uh, coastal uh, bodies. So once once this approvals are everything is done and once plan everything is done, then the actual project uh, kicks off then the consultant once uh, the client gives approval on the layout they fix uh, these are the features that is going to come in the building uh, the consultant starts preparing the dbr that is design basis report so design basis report is like it will be specifically uh, what uh, for separate packages if it is for civil structural it will be separate design basis report is like the consultant gives a brief what are the factors you have considered in designing those building like uh, if you take uh, what is the what is the load he has considered and uh, how how you have uh, arrived the sizes and uh, if you if you take uh, electrical uh, what do, what are the machineries he has considered and what is the load of that missionaries he has considered so every details he will be giving in the design basis report how we have arrived that design for each package like civil electrical mechanical firefighting so that that will be prepared by the uh, consultant and the preparation of work break, work breakdown structure work breakdown structure is nothing like uh, it is nothing but an act activity we split split the project into multiple activities and we prepare a schedule then we sit together and uh, we establish uh, what are the types of contract that can be awarded in this project whether it is an uh, lump sum contract so you know uh, you might have studied this uh, this and all in your uh, engineering 
so normally if it is an uh, pre engineered building pre engineered building in the sense it is a structural building like a steel structure building so that uh, normally we go it as a go as a lump sum contract like uh, the contractor themselves uh, design like uh, they the lump sum contract in the sense uh, the uh, the price of the package is fixed so if it is a 7 crore package we award the contractor uh, 7 crore so whatever the scope that has been defined to him that has to be done uh, without any uh, deviation so there is there is no uh, like uh, there is no cost reduction or uh, a cost increase in that lump sum contract unless the scope is getting changed so this is low risk on the owner so actually normally uh, it is in a, in a project uh, we don't follow only single type of contract uh, for a entire project so it depends in if you take a pre engineered building we go as a lump sum contract and other mostly other packages will be like item rate contract item rate contract is the mostly followed contract it is like you you split up into multiple uh, items and you have a defined rate for each item like uh, excavation we have a certain item and quantity and concrete we have a certain uh, rate and quantity so contractor will be paid upon actuals so what is the quant quantum of work he has done so based on that he will be paid for it is not a lump sum it is a item rate and also other things are uh, majorly not uh, executed uh, but sometimes uh, cost plus fixed fee labor contract we normally don't go to labor contract we give to a, a vendor as an item rate contract they they appoint uh, the erection gang or uh, waterproofing gang some some labor gang with them and also they supply they they have a material contract below them so we we don't go into uh, either labor contract but uh, material material part uh, if suppose client uh, demands like uh, i will supply cement i will supply concrete i will supply steel or i will supply light fittings or i will supply uh, the coolers i will supply the hu if there is any specific requirement from client then normally we go uh, like this material contract we directly go to the suppliers negotiate them and uh, we get the materials and give it to the electrical contract the installation will be done by the we we purchase the light fittings give it to the electrical contract electrical contract scope will be only the installation then uh, design build design build is uh, normally design will be done by the consultant only drawings will be issued to the contractor to execute but design build is something different the contractor themselves will design and execute the project so this is normally will be carried out in uh, this uh, tb pre engineered buildings steel structures uh, apart from that we go with uh, electrical also some some package some projects under turnkey turnkey in the sense uh, the name the as the name uh, in place it is turnkey so uh, it is like uh, you complete till till you hand over the key to the owner right from starting the project uh, till the handing over so everything has to be taken care by a contractor then uh, epc contract like engineering procurement and construction the contractor does engineering and he only does the procurement and uh, he does construction and we establish uh, what are the uh, resource deployment plan what are, what are the resource required for this project and we analyze and also we derive a procurement strategy that how we are going to appoint a contractor and uh, how we are going to uh, fix a price for them how we are going to negotiate so pre construction okay now now uh, like uh, we are we are mostly in mostly complete completed the uh, pre construction part in planning part then we comes to preparation of tender documents and tender drawings now everything is clear all design is over now consultant prepares 
a specification specification for each and every item in a project uh, what is the grade of concrete uh, what what is the uh, model of light fitting what is the uh, uh, tonnage of an hu so everything what are the what is the specification required what are the make that can uh, vendor vendor can go with so all the specifications will be prepared by the uh, consultant and he prepare drawings tender drawings detailed drawings based on that and then he prepare a tender document tender document with uh, many conditions of contract okay nor normally we follow fidic uh, in fidic we have a what are the conditions of contract that has to be uh, given for different type of uh, industry so we follow fidic we have a standard uh, formats standard uh, general conditions of contract gen uh, special conditions of contract then commercial commercial terms and conditions so how how a tender document should be so what are the payment terms to the contractor what are the, what is his warranty what is his liability what is his penalty terms if he if he completes the project uh, if he does not complete the project on timeline and what is the maintenance period is giving what is amc then uh, quality defects uh, arbitrary if there suppose if there is any issue uh, between the contractor and uh, client uh, if contractor is not agreeing uh, with respect to the tender what he has agreed for uh, then what is the arbitration class uh, then uh, what is the termination and breach contract then uh, if, if if suppose the contract is not not performing well uh, during the course of project then uh, what what is the, what is the action we can take to terminate the contract and uh, move forward with the other other vendor finalizing other vendor so uh, these these are the things will be uh, and what is about whose who scope is power whose scope is water uh, what are the scope, what are the scope of contract uh, what are the, what is the scope of client uh, everything will be defined in the tender document so once once this compile complete contract conditions is defined tender documents and uh, with uh, boq that is bill of quantities specifications and tender drawings will be floated to the uh, pre qualified vendors normally we don't float to all the vendors see if you, if you have a uh, package uh, we we have n number of vendors in the market so we we don't recommend each and every each and every vendor coming to us asking for a project uh, also even even if client recommends also we add them in the vendor list and we do pre qualification so pre qualification in the sense uh, it is like uh, rating the vendor see this this is the pre qualification format uh, like uh, there are few few uh, category we rate the vendor like uh, what what is the uh, cost of uh, the similar projects uh, he has done in the past uh, four years uh, something like that what 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 is his average turnover and uh, what is the solvency certificate from bankers and uh, what is the size of uh, what is the size of project that he has handled the past uh, uh, two years and what is his length of experience in a particular uh, package if it is electrical uh, how much years of experience uh, he is he is uh, handling in the industry and then uh, similar projects see uh, some some vendors might be good uh, in handling some projects but they they don't have specific experience what you are looking for like uh, they might be having experience in a residential building but they do not have any experience in an industrial project uh, so in that case uh, we also analyze that and also what is their staff strength and what is their uh, uh, what are the certifications they have what are the quality policies safety policies they have and uh, also we take uh, feedback from uh, other pmcs or uh, from our whole projects and also from the clients where, wherever they have worked in the previous uh, project we take uh, uh, input from them and also uh, based on that we rate the contractor and we submit it to the client for approval for this rating so based on this we have a rating like uh, uh, 65 out of 100 or 70 out of 100 it depends on the client uh, so below that we reject those contractors and who secure minimum marks we take it forward 
and only to those vendors we float the tender so once tender is floated we give sufficient time to the contractor to read the tender and the documents and we ask them to visit site and also uh, after visiting the site they they need to understand the conditions of the site physically then we'll have a pre bid meeting then what are the queries clarifications they have with respect to the tender documents drawings and uh, whatever maybe whatever the queries with respect to the project that will be clarified in the pre bid meetings and uh, based on uh, the clarifications uh, the vendor will be able to bid bid the uh, pro project then vendor will submit the bid and uh, we normal normally we accept the bid as a uh, hard copy hard copy and it will be opened uh, in front of uh, all representatives uh, mainly from client and uh, uh, pmc uh, and we compare then uh, price negotiation will happen and then if suppose if there is any value addition during tendering also uh, we take those input because uh, sometimes uh, contractor uh, themselves will be uh, what uh, they'll be very uh, technically strong uh, so they they have uh, more uh, value additions to the project so they themselves will give some value additions like uh, you can incorporate this uh, this feature in your project or uh you, you, this is outdated uh, technique instead of this we can go for this material this would be give you some uh, power uh, savings in your project uh, something like that they give some additional values so that input we take from the contractors and uh, that uh, changes will be done in the drawing and the specification so once uh, <clears throat> it is not necessary that uh, we should always go and award the project to the uh, vendor who quoted uh, very less uh, we also compare this uh, their uh, their commercial standings and also uh, their technical capability so both both has to be analyzed uh, and based on that we uh, and also on the recommendation of the client we award uh, the contract uh, to the eligible vendor so once a contract is awarded we issue a loi letter of intent the successful bidder and then uh, the contractor has to sign all the documents uh, like it, it is an uh, token of acceptance whatever the drawings whatever the specifications uh, whatever the boq boq i think everyone knows uh, this it is bill of quantities uh, we have a price uh, if you want i can show you uh, so this, this will be like a, if it is a civil boq this is a standard boq like it will be like this uh, painting this much square meter will be there in the project and cost will be like this and the uh, overall quantity so this is the this is the breakup breakup for uh, the overall amount what is awarded for Uh, then uh, letter of acceptance then uh, he has to sign on a schedule agreed schedule and uh, then quality management plan he has to give and uh, how he is going to ensure quality in a project and he has to give a hsc plan how he is going to ensure uh, uh, safety safety protocols in a project So now uh, vendor is appointed. Uh, so this 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 actually this is a process. Uh, not only for uh, one vendor, this has to be carried out for multiple vendors. Even if a project has some 10, 12 vendors, for all the vendors, this pre-qualification has to be done, and uh, this uh, tendering process has to be done, and uh, it has to be properly recorded. So this uh, everything will be done uh, on behalf of client by us. And then uh, now, now from uh, now we we are coming into construction phase. So we we appoint the site team, and uh, 
now fulfilling statutory requirements like uh, before before uh, starting the project client has uh, certain uh, statutory requirements uh, fulfillment uh, to play but uh, now after coming into the execution part contractor has to fulfill uh, his statutory requirements uh, like mainly like uh, he has to take labor license uh so without without this uh, statutory requirements we are not supposed to start the project uh so when he has to apply for labor license and with acknowledgement we can start the work uh then uh, we define a site logistic plan so we'll have multiple vendors multiple area of working so we need to analyze a common site logistic plan how a vehicle can enter how a vehicle will move out uh, where will be this vehicle, this vendor, where he can uh, place all his uh, fabrication yard or uh, he can place his containers. Everything has to be defined in a site logistic plan and uh, infrastructure development. Uh, and so before this stage, we have drawings named as tender drawings. Now that drawing will get changed into GFC. That is good for construction drawings. Excuse me. Okay. Then a contractor mobilizes resources based on uh, his resource, his agreed resource deployment plan. And uh, based on the GFC that is good for construction drawings, he prepares shop drawings. Shop drawings in the drawings uh, which have minute details as per site conditions. See, whatever the drawings uh, the consultant gives, that is a uh, that is also a detailed drawing, but uh, it will be a, like a general drawing which have uh, the detail uh, in major aspect. But uh, if you if you want to get into a minor detail, where, how, how the support, pipe support will hang in the column. So that even sections, minute details that has to be, that drawings has to be prepared by the contractor during, before execution. And uh, that that normally we call it as shop drawings that has to be approved from consultant before commencing the work. Then contractor start procuring the ones, consultant approves the shop drawing. The contractor arrives the quantity of material that is required for the project. So based on the DOQ, tender specification, drawings, contractor will order the material. And uh, during execution, we also do field test for all materials, uh, uh, concrete, steel, uh, uh, whatever cable, cable, everything. All the materials we do field test, whether it is uh, working or it is in tolerance limit, everything will be checked. And also, uh, there are certain items that has to be uh, tested in a third party lab. So we give it for third party lab. Uh, some some for uh, some materials, we get a manufacturer test certificate and ensure that quality is being uh, implemented at site as per the uh, quality assurance plan. So this, this is also uh, developed before execution. And also we start execu executing the work as per, as per the baseline schedule. We prepare a baseline schedule, get it approved from the client. So uh, based on that, we execute the project. And also uh, we ensure that uh, uh, there are no accidents. We have uh, safety protocols, uh, uh, certain uh, safety principles uh, that has to be adopted by a contractor. So that will be implemented, implemented at the site. And also we update uh, because see, uh, normally uh, projects will have multiple uh, issues, uh, multiple hindrances, uncertainties, uh, which we cannot predict. So uh, uh, it is it is not like uh, the project uh, will be moving as per the plan. So there will be some uh, uh, delays or uh, some lags in a project. So that has to be updated properly and it has to be communicated to all the stakeholders and uh, also parallelly we need to arrive the catch up plan uh, how we are going to uh, mitigate those delays and also cash flow management so during project we also uh, prepare a cash flow management 
uh, what is the work what is the work order value that has given to the vendor and how much we have expand, expensed till date and uh, what is what is the projected cost so where are we standing on the commercials so that has to be updated to the client at then and there and also uh, during if there is any value engineering for alternate materials or alternate uh, technology or alternate uh, uh, solutions in terms of uh, uh, material or technology that has to be uh, intimated to client and that can be changed during the course of project and if if there is any change in the project with respect to cost or uh, with respect to specification or whatever whatever the changes that you make deviate from the uh, tender agreed uh, tender drawings or specific uh, boq or specifications that has to be uh, provided to the client in the form of change order then we have a uh, monitoring and control uh, so that uh, uh, we we actually uh, was uh, just a second uh, yeah so monitoring and control normally uh, we track the progress we track we track the progress like uh, uh, in msp that is the most most uh, commonly used uh, uh, software planning software uh, in uh, india and uh, see whatever whatever i have told you uh, it will be here like uh, pre construction stage and uh, dbr submission statutory approvals then vendor onboarding then pq evaluation tender document receipt uh, final tender tender floating bid meeting bid submission by vendors so all this all each and every activity will be captured in pre construction and uh, during uh, uh, what are the capital equipments uh, long lead items uh, what are the capital equipment dg transformer lt panel compressors ups what are the capital equipment that we need to pursue? Then vendor on board, kickoff meeting. Uh, then we have the sessions of GFC, then submission of soft drawings, then a delivery of long lead item, then delivery of package metal, then construction stage. Uh, first, we start with land development, then uh, pre engineer building, then civil, and uh, what is the roofing timeline, and civil flooring timelines, and block or toilet, block works. So each activity, then MEP works, electrical works, fire protection, HVAC, heating, uh, ventilation, air conditioning, then electrical, then plumbing, then ELV fire alarm, public addressing, access control. So this these are the schedule. This is the schedule we prepare and we track. Where what is the what is the plan date and where are we on the plan date? How much lag? in each activity so ultimately once construction completes then we have a uh, post construction de snagging technical and commercial close out so main uh, this you might have studied in your uh, cps uh, construction planning and scheduling uh, during during preparation of schedule the main main uh, thing which we need to focus uh, is the critical path and the activities on the critical path so uh, that that uh, that we should be able to give it to uh, highlight to client that uh, what are all the critical activities every weekly basis or uh, fortnightly basis so this because the these critical activities will get keep on changing during the course of project so uh we, we because uh in the last week certain activity will not be in the critical path but due to delay that activity might be in the critical path in the this week or in the upcoming week so that activity has to be pushed that activity has to be pushed by deploying additional resources uh, or additional manpower or additional missionaries, whatever it is, and uh, that has to be uh, uh, ensured that that it is meeting as per the uh, baseline. 
so monitoring and control mainly uh, cost cost is uh, tracked with respect to the agreed boq with rates and uh, if there is any cost increase normally uh, the cost will be increased uh, due to uh, two factors one is quantity variation quantity variation in the sense you might have considered some 1000 cubic meter of excavation in a project but during execution you you may it may increase you may you might end up with uh, some 500 or 1000 extra so in that their quantity variation comes and then nt nt is non tender item non tender item in the sense uh, unfortunately if you miss certain item drawings it will be there but while preparing the bill of quantities you leave certain items so that is that, that items will be recorded as a non tender item that that items cost has to be uh, that will be increased with respect to the baseline cost and also quality quality we ensure we have a basis a quality assurance plan and a method statement specification we ensure that everything is going as per that if it is not going as per that we issue site note to the vendors and uh, ncs non non conformance report to the vendors and if still if uh, if it is continuing then in that case we issue penalty we issue penalty to the vendors and we also track the resources what is the resources that they have uh, earlier agreed for and uh, what is the uh, resource that they are deploying and uh, see uh, this is monitoring and control part so once uh, uh, the project uh, it's uh, coming to a closer stage uh, the building is completed and everything is in place now uh, in commercial in close out phase we are splitting up into two one is commercial close out other one is technical close out uh, in commercial close out we we need to inform uh, the client uh, so like uh, uh, what is the budget we have considered and uh, uh, why it has been increased and uh, what what is the reason for that and uh, with backups and also what is the quantum of uh, material that has been uh, considered and uh, how much we have consumed so everything is in place uh, like uh, uh, material reconciliation normally done uh in in order to check whether we are over certifying the contractors see normally uh, contractors might bring uh, some uh, 100 m cube of concrete but uh, they might have uh, claimed they might have claimed in the bill somewhere around 120 m cube uh, so we do not know uh, while certifying the bill but if we have this material reconciliation with us uh, so what is the material that has been brought inside the project and uh, what is the material that has been actually consumed in the project so that difference that we'll be able to compare uh, with the reconciliation metal reconciliation sheet so this has to be updated to the client and also uh, all the bills uh, how much we are certified and uh, price variation if there is any price variation that has to be submitted and also uh, during the course of project uh, vendor will be uh, submitting some uh, advances uh, will will be during uh, starting the project the client will pay uh, some 10% uh, of the project project value or 20% of the project value to the contractor in order to kick start the project so during the course of the project that amount will be debited from the contractor bills on pro rata basis uh so that uh, that accounts has to be maintained by us and also retention amount so each uh, payment if you are paying 1 crore to the contractor we hold we hold 5% of the uh, bill value that is in a general practice we hold 5% of the bill value uh, that uh, each bill we if it is a 10 crore pro, 10 crore value uh, if it is, if it is uh, climbing the bill in 10 intervals like 1 crore each value so we hold uh, 5% in each bill uh, cumulative to uh, 
uh, if it is a 10 crore uh, uh, around uh, 50 lakhs 50 lakhs will be hold in his bill that amount will be kept hold with the client so uh, it is it will be hold till for the period of uh, some 12 months or 18 months or 24 months whatever it is that is agreed in the tender uh, so after the completion of the project we call that that period as dlp that is defect liability period so once the contractor completes the project he will be able to get only 90 percent or 95 percent of his work work done value so balance five percent ten percent will be hold as a retention money which will be released only after 12 months or 24 months whatever it is upon uh, client ensures that there is no defect in the product what he has delivered even though if there is any defect uh, it is a uh, duty of the contractor to go to the project to, to go to the building and uh, get those uh, defects rectified so unless unless he do, unless he do, uh, does not do that uh, his amount will be fortified and uh, uh, that will be used for, by the client for those uh, rectifications and uh, technical close out uh, once all uh, projects everything is completed so earlier we, we started with the tender drawings first we started with concept drawings and then uh, we started with uh, then we spoke about tender drawings during tender and then it has turned into good for construction drawings that is during execution and uh, during the close out uh, this will become as a uh, as built drawings so uh, see during the course of uh, work uh, we might have changed some uh, design in the project we might have routed uh, the cable uh, cable uh, in the different uh, direction or we may we might have changed the drain direction or uh, we might have uh, uh, we have, we might have we might have closed that room we might have provided an additional room uh, we might have removed a window we might have incorporated a rolling shutter we might have uh, added a door so something like that so the, these are the things uh, that has to be incorporated in the drawing and it has to be provided by the contractor to the client in the name of as built drawings so as the name suggests it is as built whatever is built so that has to be incorporated in the drawings and it has to be given to the client and also uh, we we give give the client uh, the valuation report so what are the value addition as a project management consultant that we have done in this project uh, in terms of uh, savings of cost or uh, time or uh, uh, what are the efforts that we have put uh, uh, to which are added value in this project so that uh, we we shared to the client and extension of time extension of the time report that is uh, uh, like uh, uh, we we uh, priorly uh, aim for one year completion but the project may end up uh, in one year three months then uh, we are in a position to justify the client uh, what 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 is the uh, what are, what are the factors that led to those uh, time increase? So we need to have those backup uh, right from the start of the project uh, till the end. Uh, unless otherwise it is very difficult to go back, uh, take those input and project it to client. And also uh, we, uh, we, we prepare lessons learned. Uh, what are the things that uh, we have failed or uh, we have missed out? or uh, we have implemented successfully uh, those those things will be uh, whether it is a plus or minus that will be recorded as a lessons learned uh, that that will be passed on to our uh, 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 admin team and uh, this uh, will have it as a reference for our future projects and uh, all the technical documents like uh, Test certificate, uh, warranty, whatever the material that a contractor is bringing in, we need to have the warranty and uh, operation manual, uh, spares list, everything, everything, all the technical documents. So far, what are the things we have collected in this project? 
that has to be compiled and handed over to the uh, client team. Uh, mostly uh, in a project, once project is done, uh, the facility team of a client takes, takes the building. Like facility team in the sense, uh, they manage that facility. Uh, so we, we are in a position to uh, give uh, training, training to the uh, facility team and also uh, provide them with the necessary technical uh, details. What are they asking? So that they have a hassle-free uh, maintenance and also running of a factory in the future. So this this is uh, like uh, we have completed constru construction, pre-construction, construction, and post-construction. So th that marks the end of the uh, project uh, life cycle. So we have uh, n number of uh, uh, things other than this, but I don't want to, to get into very much detail. Uh, so uh, we do have some challenges uh, in project management, like um, lack of stakeholder engagement, like uh, because see we uh, it is it is not like an uh, uh, IT company uh, where people work, uh, they they deal with uh, only few people. Uh, not roughly, uh, in, uh, a programmer, developer, or someone, uh, they, they roughly speak to uh, 10, 20 people in a day. But uh, as, a, as a project management consultant, uh, or you, you as a civil engineer, when, when you come, come to an industry, uh, we, we have uh, multiple things to follow. We have ma multiple uh, stakeholders to uh, to speak to and to understand their requirements and uh, fulfill their requirements. So uh, if if we fail, if we fail in uh, one one of the stakeholders' performance or uh, uh, if his engagement is not proper, something like that, uh, ultimately it will have an uh, effect on the project and also scope creep uh, see as i said earlier uh, mostly we are not able to complete uh, the project on timeline and uh, on the budget is mainly because of the uh, increase in scope that that normally comes due to poor planning and uh, and the additional features that are uh, needed by the client during the course of project the client introduces multiple features in the project and uh, other environmental and external factors, uh, this uh, you cannot predict. Uh, see, in Chennai, you'll have a monsoon in the month of October or November. Uh, but uh, uh, even even in some months, it it moves, uh, in, it, it still continues uh, till December end or uh, January mid. So you, you cannot predict always uh, the monsoon or external factors. Uh, uh, that is hitting the project very badly and also unrealistic uh, deadlines see uh, client uh, normally uh, they they have like uh, uh, they they want their uh, missionaries to coming in uh, and uh, they want their occupation people to coming in uh, so they they have some uh, timelines uh, which is unrealistic uh, but uh, we should be in a position to match up their requirements, but however, uh, it is very difficult uh, as a project consultant uh, to match uh, uh, the unrealistic deadlines. Sometimes it uh, it comes in a project, and also balancing the triple constraints that is uh, time, cost, and scope. So one one changes, the other uh, automatically changes. So balancing of those triple constraints is very difficult in a project. And also strategy requirements. See, we, we have to be uh, updated on all these stat statistical requirements. If suppose uh, if if we uh, lag or if we miss out certain strategy requirements, uh, it may impact your uh, project uh, heavily uh, in terms of hefty fines or penalty or uh, even uh, stoppage of work until that uh, strategy requirement is uh, fulfilled. Uh, and uh, poor communication. See, uh, as a civil engineer or as a project management consultant, mostly as a project management consultant, you should be have a proper uh, communication 
uh, both in terms of uh, uh, oral oral communication and uh, through mail communication or uh, uh, whatever it is, you have to have a record for everything. What whatever the actions that you perform, uh, so what whatever the things because uh, documentation control is uh, more more much important uh, in a project management consultant's uh, point of view. Uh, so uh, communication. If you if you fail to communicate, like if you, if a consultant is telling you something, uh, like uh, I, I wanted to shift this door to there and uh, uh, you need to shift the cable tray to that height, or something like that, and you fail to do that uh, in a in during the course of project. Uh, every, once everything is completed, then you, you will not be in a position to go there open open the roof or open the wall and uh, execute uh, that uh, missed items uh, after, once the construction is done so uh, like uh, we should be uh, properly communicative to all the stakeholders whatever the communications sent by the client that has to be passed on to all the contractors and the con consultants and whatever the consultants pass the information that has to be passed on to the uh, contractors so communication is uh, very much important, but uh, during the course of project, uh, you you have to be there at site handling uh, multiple uh, issues, and also you have to be at the laptop, uh, uh, give communication to all the vendors and consultants. So it is it is uh, slightly difficult, uh, but uh, we have actually we have improved uh, like uh, deputing additional resource, uh, like uh, we have a documentation engineer now. Now, uh, document uh, many uh, consultants or companies they have, they started appointing a documentation engineer, so they have uh, control over 100% documentation in a project. They are they are particularly uh, focusing on maintaining all the documents in a project. So, in that kind of things we can uh, control uh, this thing and uh, uh, resource deprivation, so resource uh, shortage. Uh, so, uh, resource uh, in the sense. Uh, uh, you 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 cannot predict that that resource because we have uh, around thousand thousand five hundred resources uh, in a project, but uh, you will not be able to track in uh, uh, practically speaking, you will not be able to track each and every item that is going to be supplied by each and every contractor. So uh, contractor has to be much responsive. Contractor has to be much responsible. Uh, unless if contractor is not uh, not performing, uh, if he's not bringing the resource in the right time, uh, it is very difficult for uh, project management consultant uh, to handle that uh, project. So uh, see, these are these are the uh, feature and advancements in uh, constructions, uh, uh, building information uh, modeling. Uh, so with the advancements in uh, building information, it is a, a platform uh, where you'll be able to see the building in a reality. So whatever the drawing you do is a 2D, and then uh, what are the we have a 3D Studio Max and uh, this uh, visually you are able to see the, your uh, building in the 3D walkthrough and everything. Uh, here are you, you in you, in advance you go certain in depth in depth you go and see where your uh, duct is going in the building and where your pipeline is moving in the building and where your cable tray is moving in the building. So you will, you are able to uh, uh, see whether there is any clash because uh, normally uh, during construction, we, we, we do construction with the help of 2D drawings, 2D drawings. So with the help of 2D drawings, we, we normally execute the work at site, but you only after you lay all the cable trays, then only you will come to know that uh, some other utility services is going in the same line and it is uh, hitting and it is hindering that activity. So uh, introduction of BIM uh, has uh, actually uh, uh, helpful in uh, class detection. Uh, actually, uh, I've not personally used uh, uh, BIM in my project. But uh, I know uh, what, what are the features uh, in BIM, BIM uh, we have. Uh, now even uh, <clears throat> uh, we are able to track uh, schedule with the help of uh, BIM, where are we? Uh, uh, 
in terms of uh, uh, visually visually where are we on the progress where we should have been and now, now where are we so in a, a 3d view you, you can able to see in the beam uh, but it is uh, slightly it is uh, uh, costlier to uh, uh, learn in lakhs uh, some, somewhere around lakhs uh, but even uh, I'm, I'm not uh, fully aware of uh, the uh, details uh, in BIM and uh, digitalization I think uh, this this is not uh, implemented but it is the futures future uh, people uh, future these are all the things that may come in the construction industry uh, the help of augmented reality and virtual reality you sit at office uh, with a with a virtual uh, uh, camera you'll be able to visualize uh, how how your uh, building inside will be uh, it's, it's more or more or like a walk through uh, uh, where you, where you go you you just move move inside your building you take a left you take a right what is there here what is there there so you'll be able to see uh, virtually <clears throat> uh, so these are the things and also 3d printing 3d printing also uh, uh, now now it is coming in uh, but uh, uh, I'm not aware uh, where it has been implemented recently, but uh, uh, it is slowly coming in. And uh, this uh, drones, drones we use normally. Drones, uh, with the help of drone, we use uh, every fortnight. Fortnight, uh, we used to uh, capture the pictures of a project, and uh, we make a video or a presentation, and uh, send it to client. And uh, uh, with the help of drones, it will be easy to uh, for the higher management people who sit at office or uh, head office uh, to view the progress, uh, what is happening physically at site. And also if there is any safety violations or if it is any quality defects uh, in construction, uh, ev everything, everything will be able to see through drones and uh, CCTV cameras before, before starting the construction, we will have a CCTV camera all around uh, uh, the site. Uh, so that uh, <clears throat> people uh, who are far away from the site, not accessible to site, they will be able to view the uh, live progress, uh, what is happening on uh, whether uh, people are starting early, the, starting the work early or uh, they are uh, closing the site early or something something like that. Uh, actual uh, site conditions will be uh, able to, to be viewed by the uh, people. And, uh, uh, RFID tags, uh, this is the radio frequency identification tag. This also, uh, this is being implemented, but uh, not, not to the fullest extent. Uh, of, uh, RFID tags, like, uh, uh, see, this is this is nothing but uh, like uh, uh, you have a SIM card uh, in your in your ID card. Uh, so wherever you are at site, you, you can be tracked. And uh, at what height you are working, you, you can be tracked. And for material, if, if suppose if you are missing some material, material can be uh, tag and be tag can be placed to the material. And if it is un you are unknowingly burying the material, uh, then only you can find the, where the material is. So uh, with RFID tags, you can uh, uh, it will be helpful in uh, having a control over uh, this material and uh, uh, machinery and manpower. And uh, they, they, these are the uh, just to give an insight on uh, what are, what are the roles that you can play uh, after you coming in uh, from the college. Uh, like, see, uh, it depends on your interest. It depends on your interest. If if you are if you are good at uh, estimation and quantity surveying, whatever you are studying now, uh, you can be a better uh, tendering or uh, estimation or costing engineer. And if you are good at planning. Uh, then, then you have to be uh, uh, thorough with your uh, uh, schedule, making schedules and uh, uh, handling this MS, MS project. And uh, you can be a better planning engineer. And uh, if if you are uh, very much interested in design, you can be a structural engineer or a design engineer and uh, uh, detailing engineer and. Uh, uh, if you are good at communication, uh, you 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 wish to speak to people, you wish to talk to many many stakeholders in a project, and uh, you want to be a like a, you can choose a role like project coordinator. Uh, so whose role whose role is like to coordinate everyone, get the input from one and share to other, 
so that role you can play and uh, billing engineer is uh, same is more or less same to uh, the costing and uh, quality assurance and quality control if you are good at uh, performing all the test uh, whatever you are studying in the concrete highway lab or uh, soil mechanics lab or uh, whatever lab uh, surveying uh, everything what are, you are you are very good at uh, handling all those tests uh, then you can improve your uh, capability in that and you can become a quality assurance and quality control engineer and uh, procurement engineer if you are if you are good at uh, uh, the analyzing the markets uh, you know the prices of each and every material you know the current market labor rates uh, and uh, you you know the current trends uh, what are the designs what are the models available in the market each and every material uh, then you have a better option to go as a procurement engineer uh, then uh, site you 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 want to be more more uh, away from the office and uh, you want to uh, deal with uh, the actual construction at site uh, you want to visibly see uh, the building keep growing and uh, uh, you want to speak to many people at site uh, so if you are interested in that you can be a site execution engineer and uh, site execution engineer normally we they have a separate engineer for uh, civil constructions and uh, structural construction and the finishes uh, normally certain engineers uh, they have uh, certain capability uh, to look only upon finishes once once completion of the structure uh, the details each and every finishing details uh, if you have any keen interest uh, to mainly look upon uh, the finishes you can be a finishes engineer and uh, you can be a uh, if you are very uh, 3d design or uh, draftsman or something like that autocad you can be a cad designer and a bim modeler uh, this is uh, quite new uh, if you want to become a bim modeler uh, you can go for a course and you can learn and uh, you can join a company very very few companies are offering these roles but you have a, a huge uh, uh, scope in the future uh, so autocad draftsman and surveyor even even uh, some of the civil engineers uh, they have interest in safety uh, they do safety course uh, one year course or uh, uh, diploma courses and they become uh, safety engineers also so you have uh, and uh, even some civil engineers uh, they do uh, uh, they do join uh, in business development team uh, they have good communication skills, uh, so they join a construction firm and do only business development. And uh, certain engineers, they also do, uh, they involve in marketing, marketing related to the construction products. So that is also quite possible. Uh, so if you have interested in marketing, you can uh, look for uh, those kind of opportunities. So this is this is the uh, overall uh, role. Uh, roles that you can uh, play after you uh, step in into the industry uh, so i think uh, i've done my presentation uh, thanks for your uh, time and uh, perseverance uh, i know it's a uh, it's a long weekend for you but not for civil engineers uh, but uh, however uh, uh, you patiently heard my uh, presentation uh, thanks to each and uh, everyone. Uh, if you have any queries or any clarifications, doubts, uh, or any uh, knowledge sharing, I'll be able to even uh, uh, take from you also. Uh, we can discuss. Thank you, sir. Yeah, uh, Ah, yes. Ah, thank you, sir. Thank you so much sir, for the webinar. So, uh, I have two participants who have raised your hand. Uh, uh, participants, if you have any queries, you can ask that to the speaker. Yes. Anyone? Yeah. May I speak? I'm Ravi Kanakaraj. Yes, yeah, sir. You Ravi go ahead, sir. 
uh, almost yes good afternoon to all and having uh, listened to the project management uh, being a safety person i would like to know at what stage of the life cycle of project management you will start talking about safety management <clears throat> actually uh, see the the first uh, person uh, who who steps in uh, a project is a, a planner and a project manager uh, the second the next uh, critical resource uh, is a safety resource uh, so uh, during tender also if you see uh during tender we have a separate class separate class for uh safety we have a separate contract document with respect to uh, ohsc occupational health and safety engineering and uh, in that we define what are the things that uh, the contractor has to perform with respect to safety and uh, he, there is like the contractor has to submit the safety manual how he is going to perform the project uh, with safety protocols and each and every activity before starting the contractor has to submit a uh, safe work method statement how he is going to execute the work uh, with safety and he has to submit hira it has hazard hazard identification and risk assessment for each activity he has to submit a hira uh, so after you uh, the contractor is submitting everything we 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 incorporate each and every uh, uh, terms and conditions with respect to safety in the tender like a contractor has to have all this personal protective equipments uh, at least uh, 30% or 40% more than the requirement uh so everything and if uh, he is violating if he is violating the safety norms uh, uh what are the actions that that is being that will be taken at site so that also will be incorporated what is the penalty amount that also will be incorporated uh, so safety starts when a project starts so that is in pre even pre construction also during tender stage itself it starts and during construction we have our safety resource at site uh, who is uh, reviewing all this a safety plan uh, emergency preparedness plan if there is any emergency at site uh, how people have to be evacuated and uh, all this all this uh, safety details with respect to the project that will be handled by a uh, safety resource and also uh, during the uh, Uh, construction phase uh, safety audit will be conducted uh, monthly once uh, and uh, ensure that all documents uh, all uh, safety implementations are uh, with respect to the agreed uh, tender conditions so to to so to be to be short uh, your this uh, safety uh, starts uh, right from the uh, pre construction stage okay thank you thank you thank you so participants we have any other questions for us sir hello sir yes my name is satya deshni i have a doubt uh, so while initial stage of construction we may we might have a uh, uh, fixed uh, some amount of uh, uh, money but uh, during the construction uh, sometimes the price of the materials might get high or we might have done some uh, mistakes while construction and because of that the uh, yeah yeah continue continue i'm able to hear you okay uh, so uh, uh, because of some mistakes the amount might rise so how can we manage that uh, cost uh, elevation sir <clears throat> yeah actually uh, see it depends on the uh, type of contract that you are awarding okay if if it is a uh, lump sum contract the contractor is not eligible to ask for any 
uh, increase in uh, price or uh, uh, whatever it is okay and also he is giving he is uh, quoting for the overall scope of work in a lump sum manner so uh, he he cannot claim for any increase in cost in the later and also uh, even even if it is an item rate contract also uh, during tender we have to mention if there is a price variation class like uh, uh, if, if there is cement cement if current uh, market price is 330 rupees per bag so uh, we fixed a basic price as 330 okay and uh, during course of construction if the cement uh, prices goes up to 400 so uh, what is the actual uh, quantum of uh, work that is uh, that is quantum of bags that is bags that has been purchased by the contractor that uh, differential amount will be paid to him suppose if that class is being mentioned in the tender if suppose that class is not being mentioned it, it is the responsibility of the contractor okay whatever the price increases or decreases even if the price price is going to decrease the contract is not going to pass on the uh, savings to the client right so it is the responsibility of the contractor and uh, if, if the price goes up then uh, he has to manage uh, with the cost uh, what he has agreed for uh, but we will act only as per the contract conditions but if uh, normally uh, for for concrete then uh, reinforcement and uh, uh, for concrete and reinforcement uh, we uh, have a price variation class uh, also some some few other items but uh, uh, if it is agreed certainly uh, that differential amount has to be paid to the contractor but if it is not agreed in the tender uh, then contractor has to be worked uh, on uh, whatever the rate he has agreed for. We will not be able to pay any extra amount to him. Thank you, sir, for your clarification. Thank you. So, participants, uh, the feedback link is shared in the chat box. You can fill the feedback form. And do you have any other queries, participants? Uh, Mr. Rajesh, you have raised your hand. Yes. Anyone else? So feedback form is shared in the chat box, please. So there's no query, sir. Uh, so thank you so much sir, uh, for your uh, wonderful lecture. And thank you for your time. Uh, now I request uh, Raghavendra, third year student, to propose a lot of thanks. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Um, a very good note to one all present here. It gives me an immense pleasure to deliver the vote of thanks for this webinar uh, to all dignitaries assembled here on this occasion. I take this opportunity to express my deepest sense of gratitude and appreciation to all those who made this event such a resounding success. Firstly, I would like to thank our beloved chief guest, Mr. G. T. Kote Swaran sir for spending his valuable time for giving this wonderful lecture on the topic project management in construction and industry approach we feel very much enlightenment in gaining much knowledge about the importance of project management in construction sir last but not least i would like to thank our hod ma'am dr r kumuda ma'am for organizing this webinar and our faculty coordinator mr vijay vignesh sir who coordinated this webinar I, I would also like to thank all the faculty members and students and other participants for being the pillars of this session. Thank you. Thank you, sir. And uh, once again, sir, someone has asked a question like uh, Ms. Shobha. Uh, please brief on logistic plan. Someone has asked a question in the chat box. Yeah, okay. <clears throat> See, lo log logistic plan uh in the sense uh, it is purely uh with respect to the uh, site okay so we we have uh, n, n number of vendors initially we will start with one vendor and uh, while the pro project progresses uh, we will have n number of vendors coming in 
so uh, we need to allocate uh, defined space for the vendor to uh, place their office then uh, place their store area and uh, place their uh, uh, this fabrication yard and uh, where do where do they have their uh, drinking water facilities for laborers and resting facilities for laborers and uh, uh, this uh, uh, restroom facilities for laborers and uh, all this will be uh, predefined and also we have with respect to safety we will have fire point uh, fire extinguishers and uh, this thing so if there is any case of emergency uh, people no need to have to run so people who are there on the site they need to understand uh, where, is, where, where are the facilities at site uh, so and also uh, routing like how we, we need to enter the site we will have a pedestrian pathway and we have a separate pathway for uh, missionary movement and uh, so uh, we educate the laborers uh, how they need to go inside uh, in a pedestrian pathway and uh, how uh, missionaries and other uh, uh, trailers or other unloading uh, for unloading uh, that vehicles has to come in and uh, which way they they need to exit the site also uh, what what is the time they have to come in and uh, what is the time they have to go out and also this uh, this all details uh, will be captured in the uh, logistic plan and also it will be circulated to all the stakeholders in the project so that they will educate their team on this uh, uh, so that they will uh, easily come to know even even if a new uh, visitor or a new labor coming in they will be first educated on this uh, site logistic plan uh, so that while entering the site itself, they will understand uh, where uh, where all the facilities and where it is where it is uh, kept. This uh, site logistic plan actually normally uh, it it will get changed. Uh, there is chances more, more frequent ch chances for this plan to get changed during the course of project because normally you you have to construct uh, something some culvert uh, on the road. And you have to cast. You have to start uh, doing the concrete road works. So in that time, you cannot access that road. So you need to make an alternative uh, path for the entry of um, uh, people uh, and missionaries. So in that time, we need to revise the site logistic plan. We need to take approval, and uh, we need to pass on the information to all the uh, vendors. So that that is the that is. Uh, that is the detail about uh, this uh, site logistic plan. Thank you, sir. Uh, so we have another question like, uh, do we have any softwares for construction management except Primavera and PMS project? This is the question from Mr. De Ms. Devi Silverlands. yeah actually uh see this uh project management in the sense uh, uh scheduling normally we go with uh ms project and primavera only uh, ms ms project is the mostly used uh, software with respect to schedule uh, other other than that uh, uh see we uh, use like uh, uh this uh autocad normally we use and also uh Considering the you know, overall uh, scenario, this uh, Revit, and we have uh, Navis, and Synchro, and uh, Archicad, and CAD Pro, and also this design softwares, uh, STAT, Tecla, uh, so detailing softwares. So this, these are all the softwares now frequently used uh, by us in the industry. But normally, with respect to, with respect to this scheduling, tracking part, we are uh, uh, we are restrict, restricting us with uh, only uh, MS project and uh, Primavera. Mostly with MS project, not with Primavera. Primavera only we used only in uh, abroad. Thank you, sir. So, participants, if you have any other queries. Okay, sir. Uh, Ma'am, maturity, ma'am, you want to see anything? 
but no sir i think he is running out of time because he is working today let us close the session if there are no questions from the participants okay okay sir uh, thank you sir thank you so much sir for your time thank you thank you thanks 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 team for your support thank you yeah, thank you so much thank you sir yeah, thank you mr koteshwaran sir okay.